Hey YouTube, it's been a very long time and there has been a lot of new additions. Um, as you guys can see, we'll do a detailed walkthrough. But first, we're just going to do an overall um, preview of what has been added. <clears throat> it's been a while since I recorded any videos and done anything and just preparing for a lot of uh, big exams, going for the BCP and uh, preparing for the VCAPs for VMware. So let's get started. So we still have the edge routers, which this one controls external DMZ, um, external access for hosted applications. This is a private one, which dedicates the internet access for the home side. So I don't have to tear down the connection and prevent downtime for the rest of the household. Um, we have a, a Cisco a WSA, it's a web security appliance. It is actually, I've modded it. I have ESXi 6.5 uh, Cisco uh, image running on it. Uh, I removed the uh, two spindles and put SSDs in here. So we're running PFSense virtualized. So if something happens, there's a quick uh, recovery time and the platform is back up and running. So that way it's a better efficiency and overall use of the whole platform. Uh, we have a Dell PowerConnect 5448. This is a non-POE edition. This one pretty much runs all the end devices in the house, OP TVs, computers, anything else that is part of um, the network. Uh, we have a 20 gigabit LACP uplink to my 10 gigabit core, which I'll show you a little bit later. So we have uh, redundancy there. We're going to order some new fibers. They'll be here pretty soon from uh, fs.com. Uh, we have a patch panel, which you can go up to 24. As you can see, there's some uh, patches that are only in the household. There's some other uh, patch that I have on a different area of the house where um, I use, but this is for the local area area of the rack where I have all the access points plugged in and everything that's nearby. Um, here's a Dell 5524P. This is the PoE version of the 5500 family series. This is powering my uh, three Unify HD access points. Um, this is primarily my main switch before I got the 48 port. And uh, I kind of use this one now for access points or anything that's needed PoE powered. And as well, we have a 20 gigabit uplink, LACP. It's a uh, port channel group. So that's why there's some redundancy into the network so now let's get into the hosts as you may have seen this is the same r720 xd that i had before it has 24 terabytes of 10k sas drives uh, then it has two one terabyte ssds in the rear this has a version 2 intel xeon 2667 i believe e5 family uh 212 core monsters so a lot of compute power and this runs all my production VMs. So this one always runs. This one hosts my websites, uh, any other cloud platforms. Um, is all hosted on here. So that way this one has to have dedicated uptime, redundancy, and the best it can be. So that way this one's been doing. Uh, now the next one we have an R620. This one I have bare bone. So no drive as you can see. And the purpose of this one is this one's running as a storage controller. So it has 64 gigabytes of DDR3 registered in. It has no RAID card, no uh, HBA built in with it. I've removed that because I have an LSI 12 gigabit HBA in the rear that is powering my storage and I'm using FreeNAS for that. So with the new version of FreeNAS, you can expand your ZFS pools, so it's really awesome. So this storage controller server is running 100 terabytes of storage for Plex, other storage, media, anything that needs to be done. So I do have a Plex VM, which is hosted here, but the data can communicate via SMB from a Ubuntu VM Linux, so that way you can move you some stream without having to 
use uh, VMFS storage, which VMFS storage is primarily not recommended for any kind of media. VM storage is made for VMs and solely to the operations, files and things like that. So, and now we have one of the big, two big boys. So these these two are 720, 820s. Uh, this one has 16 SSDs, and these SSDs. I have acquired. There are only 120 gigabytes, so nothing too crazy. But this is more for like a testing server. It's more like a development server. So I am uh, specializing as well as in my uh, VMware desktop and mobility. So I do my Horizon and uh, Workspace One, anything to name it, on this one. And this one has 256 gigs of RAM, as well as this one has 256. So right total, we have 512 in these two hosts. So, this one, as well, doesn't stay on that much, I keep it limited, so that way they do use power, they're both four sockets each, so that's a lot of power. Um, I have my RA20, this one has an SSD, this one is another a development server, this one has higher frequency CPUs. And this one I don't use too much unless I need it, but they both stay to, to turn off primarily. So, but both have 256 gigabytes of RAM. So, within these three, we're already at 768. So, we have an R720. This is a new addition. I used to have a R720 three and a half inch, which is a large form factor instead of a small form factor. This one doesn't have anything because I can boot it from iSCSI from vSAN, which I'll show you guys in a second. So this one does have 256 gigs of RAM, and all three of these right now are at one terabyte. So I have one terabyte of usable memory, so quite a bit of RAM. Um, this one, don't use it too much, just an ex extra ESX high host if I need to do something. Um, I do have a lot of drives that I could fill into here, but I just put the fillers in to make it look nice. I have three R620s. Well, these three are actually a vSAN setup. So we have three 900 gigabyte Apache drives in each one, as you guys can see. So one, two, three, and these two right here are SSDs for the cache tier for vSAN, because vSAN requires just one SSD. So I have only found my 256 gigabyte SSDs, which I put them in there, and they work flawlessly. So this is a seven terabyte vSAN setup. I've played with stretch cluster, regular uh, vSAN setup, uh, fault domains. It is a really cool, aspect for storage redundancy instead of using old-fashioned RAID like this is a RAID 10 you can use RAID at the host level and have dedicated hosts that if something fails you have replicas erase your coding instead of losing something as RAID or something. Here is my cold storage server which I have 24 2 terabyte drives. This server gets turned on monthly to synchronize any kind of data that I want backed up. So at least I know that it's offsite, not offsite, but it's offsite away from the online storage where something happens, I can revert to everything. So it is pretty nifty. So now I'm going to get to my uh, EMC VNX storage, which I repurposed. So we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. This one is empty. So we have 90 terabytes of Seagate Iron Wolves. Uh, it's the performance series of their NAS drives. And I have SSDs here for cache, as you can see. And I am uh, using, I believe it's RAID Z2. And this is an always on storage. We're just talking to the R620 right there. So this is my go-to storage if I need to host something or store up some large data. So that's that.
and here's my new addition for the whole project. I do have more fiber optic cables plugged in, but I unplugged them because I had to move the switch around, and I swear so I ordered new cables is because the length limitation. So, as you can see, all these are actually for the VSAN setup. We have some other additional uh, configurations. Um, we have our primary. So this side of the switch, all these eight ports, I dedicated to the house for an expansion or anything. So internet uplink, LACP bond for the PoE switch, and then LACP bond for my edge switch, which runs the whole house. And this is for my, one of my RA20s, and this is for the primary R720. So there's that. And there's my same UPSs. I've modified these. They're no longer 1000 VA. They actually have bigger batteries in them. It is 1500 VA each one, and the runtime is much longer. I'll show you the back. So I have invested in cooling. I am using AC Infinity exhaust system, which I have boarded up my back parts of the rack so that the exhaust to heat up faster, and it works really well. And here is the back of the rack. So some of the servers are not plugged in yet because I have reconstructed this. If you follow my Instagram page for Gina Data Center, I have reorganized things and stuff like that. So this upcoming weekend, I will plug things in and uh, reorganize stuff. So as you can see, all my uh, servers have 10 gigabit uplinks. So that way there's enough bandwidth for everything. Here's the only RA20 that's turned on right now. It's not turned on, but it's plugged in. And uh, here is the LSI, uh, I can't remember the exact model, but it's 12 gigabit. So right now, I used to have two uh, VNX shells, but I've consolidated into one. And this is a DMZ uplink to the internet, which is my isolated DMZ switch, which anything that is uh, posted on the internet comes through here. So that way, um, nothing gets uh, to the private network. Um, there's the back of the Cisco appliance. They've got the WAN LAN, and we got the manager for the V Center talking to the ESXi. There's the back of the 5548 port switch, and there's the POE version of that one. So, new addition, we got two APC PDUs, 5 amps and 3 amps, really efficient. So, with all this on, it is around 10 amps, so not much. And here is my additional storage for VNX. So as you guys can see the caddies in there. Um, I do have one, two, three, four. And for my Plex array or anything I need to expand, I have these. I purchased all four of these. Well, actually two of these for $12 each. I just had to pay shipping off of eBay. Other two were actually gifted. I had to pay for the shipping from a good friend of mine. So, but yeah, there's that. And back to the home lab. So keep tuned. Uh, there will be more videos coming up. I will uh, keep people posted. There's more additions to the project. And overall, thanks for subscribing. And see you guys next time.